This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show in Tallahassee, Florida, where two women were shot dead at a yoga studio on Friday afternoon by a far-right extremist and self-proclaimed misogynist. Forty-year-old Scott Beerley had a track record of attacking women, black people and immigrants via online videos and songs and had previously been investigated for harassing women and arrested at least twice, once on allegations of battery against women. In 2014, he was banned from the Florida State University campus. On Friday evening, Beerley entered a hot yoga studio in Tallahassee, reportedly posing as a customer before opening fire on the class. He shot and killed two women. Four other women were shot but survived, including one woman who was shot nine times. Beerley also pistol-whipped a man in the rampage before turning the gun on himself. The man reportedly attempted to stop the gunman, wrestling Beerley after his gun jammed. Police say he was found dead at the yoga studio from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The two victims of the massacre are 61-year-old Nancy Van Vessem, a medical doctor and a faculty member at Florida State University, and 21-year-old Mara Binkley. She was a student at Florida State University as well, majoring in German and journalism. Binkley had traveled to Washington, D.C., in the wake of the Parkland massacre to lobby lawmakers with Parkland survivors and their families. She was a major advocate of gun control. BuzzFeed has reported Beerley posted racist and misogynistic video screeds on a YouTube channel in 2014, where he called women sluts and whores. He also bemoaned, quote, the collective treachery of girls who had attended high school with him. Another of his 2014 videos was titled The Rebirth of My Misogynism. Beerley had also expressed sympathy for Elliot Roger, who killed six people in Isla Vista, California, in 2014, after posting a misogynistic video online vowing to take his revenge on women for sexually rejecting him. Roger had urged other incels, or involuntary celibates, to fight back. Beerley reportedly served two years in the military, from 2008 to 2010. Friday's attack comes in the wake of a spate of lethal gun attacks in recent weeks. Last month, a gunman entered Pittsburgh's Tree of Life synagogue Saturday, shooting and killing 11 Jewish worshippers in what has been described as the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in American history. Just days before that, a white gunman fatally shot two African Americans at a Kentucky grocery store shortly after trying and failing to enter a black church. To talk more about the implications of Friday's attack and the murder of two women, we go to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Soraya Chamale, longtime writer, feminist activist, author of the new book, Rage Becomes Her, The Power of Women's Anger. She's also director of the Women's Media Center Speech Project. Samaya, wel Soraya, welcome back to D Democracy Now! Thank you, Amy. Talk about what you understood happened on Friday afternoon. It was about 5.30, apparently, when this man walked into this yoga studio in Tallahassee, Florida. I think it's very clear that it was a, a premeditated act of, of violence, and he walked into a yoga studio, which is a target of opportunity, like a school, for example, or a shopping mall, where there are certainly uh, predictably more women. Uh, he set out, I think, to to kill women, and that's what he did. Uh, in in many of these cases, men are also hurt and killed, as in the case with Elliot Roger. But you know, I think he's been very clear. He documented his his intent. He documented his feelings, and um, there is this direct connection between these communities of misogynistic and racist hate and the violence that we are seeing. Explain the male supremacy movement. The male supremacy movement is a sort of sprawling, networked uh, communities that believe that men are being wronged, first of all, and that they're being oppressed. And um, they're extremely authoritarian at their core, because they're based on ideas and rules and uh, hierarchies in which men dominate. And when men's domination is challenged, uh, either through uh, 
women achieving political power or withholding sex in the case of incels that men feel they're owed, um, those are challenges. And the way it becomes tessellated in, in the brain of some of these men is that they're actually defending themselves. I think George Lakoff years ago wrote an excellent piece about the metaphorical language of rape and showed the way um, men who assault women and uh, rape and then eventually kill women uh, see this as a, a way of self-defense, which we saw in Elliot Rogers' manifestos and in videos such as the one that, that this perpetrator had made. And explain who incels are and what 4chan is and um, where you can find these kind of channels, for example, that he kept on YouTube. So, actually, they're, they're openly available on any of these platforms. Uh, Reddit is a thriving ground. Reddit, I think, has tried on various occasions to such, shut down some incel groups, but they they regenerate in other forms as sub subreddits, uh, 4chan, 8chan, YouTube. These are uh, openly available expressions of misogynistic, usually misogynistic ha hatred that's married with racism and xenophobia. And um, people are free to say what they want to say, and they do. And, and so it's not very difficult to find this. I mean, for those of us who've been writing about it or very aware for years, uh, this is sort of unsurprising. I think that the levels of vitriol and hatred and um, grossly misogynistic language and imagery that, that we see in these places shocks people. But I, I'm not sure why. I mean, this is not new. And in fact, it's sort of a, an extreme efflorescence of what we see in the popular culture. Um, but we shouldn't be surprised by it anymore. This whole definition of incel, what this means? Well, it's a portmanteau of the words involuntary and celibate. It was actually used for the first time by a, a, a woman in Canada in 1997 or 98, I believe, to describe uh, her own state of involuntary celibacy. But it was never meant to be what it has become, which is a completely uh, male-dominated statement of aggrieved entitlement, usually aggrieved sexual entitlement. She herself has bemoaned this course that it's taken and um, has started an alternative organization that's very focused on the expression of love. What often happens is that lonely boys and men who, uh, you know, struggle with expression, I believe, that is tied to all kinds of other issues. I write about this in the book, in, in that emotional regulation of men causes extreme loneliness. I mean, we talk about anger being difficult for women and detached from femininity, but anger and loneliness are are thought to be part of being masculine, and it's really destructive. It's destructive to boys and men. It's destructive to the society. But they start off as, as potentially very lonely people and then get recruited into these environments that become more and more extreme and radicalized. So you go from a, a person who maybe feels hurt or lonely to a person who then has a vengeful, violent and deeply misogynistic community, encouraging them to do harm, either to themselves or to other people. According to BuzzFeed, in one video, Beerley said he resented having to subsidize, as a taxpayer, the casual sex lives of slutty girls uh, mm -hmm. through the Affordable Care Act's contraception provisions. In the same right. video, he criticized the invasion of Central American uh, children in the U.S. I, I put that in quotes, invasion of, and yes. said the migrants seeking asylum should be deported on barges. Can you talk about this intersection of anti-woman and anti-immigrant hatred? Well, I, I, it all exists on a continuum, right? And, and the—, the issue for a lot of these men in these communities is not just anti-woman, but also the idea that a white woman would willingly engage in a relationship with a man who was not white. We saw that also with Elliot Roger, who's sort of glorified in these communities. And so we see that in these extreme forms, but in fact, we see it laundered throughout the media ecosystem, certainly on the right, where the, the language of our politics is infused with this fear and this denigration and disgust of people of color and of women simultaneously. And so the idea behind marrying Im immigrants and um, feeling that they are threatening and dangerous goes hand in hand with the regulation of women. 
Um, sometimes we hear the regulation or redistribution of sex used as an expression in mainstream media, but what we're really talking about is the redistribution of women. And um, eliding those two things is, is, is really unhelpful. Um, and so we see white supremacist movements, which are focused on pushing back immigrants in a sort of toxic border patrol mentality of jailing dark uh, b black people in the country as a way of containing them. And we see that same language of containment and disgust in the idea that we should, you know, lock her up for Hillary Clinton or or continue to control women's reproduction as a function of a right of men, as entitlement of men to do this. And he served in the military, Soraya. Well, I mean, I think if you find comfort in rules and regulations and hierarchy and status, um, if that is your mindset, then you are also inclined, accordingly, to punish the people who break those rules and to feel aggrieved if you, if you are uh, among those who are not benefiting from those rules. And so, in the incel community, you can see the language uh, infused with those ideas, uh, with the idea that there are these hierarchies of men and that women are lying, manipulative. Uh, social climbers who will degrade you and deny you the right to sex, in the case of incels, because they want to scale the ladder and um, reward men who, who deserve it in other ways. You know, what about the climate now? I mean, just Friday afternoon, I was watching President Obama give a speech in Tallahassee, right? He was there to support Andrew Gillum and uh, Senator Nelson. This is in Tallahassee. It wasn't hours later before Beerley went into this Tallahassee yoga studio. And Trump uh, also came to Florida this weekend. In the past week, um, Trump revving up his uh, anti-immigrant rhetoric, <clears throat> talking about the invaders coming, something that was right. cited um, by Bowers, the man who shot up the Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh. And President Trump didn't let up. He doubled down on using those words. When the bomb yeah. letters are sent to Obama uh, and sent to George Soros, he continues to attack Soros, uh, Obama. Um, and with that kind of revving up of anger against Obama, Obama in Tallahassee that day, your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think it's very clear that he uses this rhetoric of violence and confrontation, and his language is deeply dehumanizing. It's dehumanizing to people of color, to immigrants, to women. And, you know, the dehumanizing language is the first step to the humiliation, degradation, and then eventually violence that we see uh, against people. There's no disconnecting the language and rhetoric that's being used by the president from the violence that we're seeing, the high emotional tone of our political life. And so, you know, I, I, I think to suggest, as is often the case uh, from the White House, that there's no responsibility or no connection between the words and the actions that we're seeing is— uh, is misleading, to say the least. Well, Soraya Chamali, I want to thank you for being with us. Longtime writer, feminist activist, has a new book out. It's called Rage Becomes Her, The Power of Women's Act Anger. She's also director of the Women's Media Center Speech Project. And I just want to end with the words of the rabbi uh, in Pittsburgh, who greeted President Trump, though many felt he should not go to Pittsburgh last week after the shooting, um, in a short speech sermon on Saturday. Um, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers blamed politicians for a rise in hateful rhetoric, saying it led to the massacre at the a synagogue last week in which 11 Jews were slain worshiping, considered the worst anti-Semitic attack on U.S. soil in history. Um, Myers um, said that he delivered the message personally to President Trump and First Lady Melania when they visited uh, the synagogue. Um, uh, he said, I said to him, Mr. President, hate speech leads to hateful actions. Hate speech leads to what happened in my sanctuary, where seven of my congregants were slaughtered. I witnessed it with my eyes. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back with Noam Chomsky in a minute.